Pete Calandra here. Today's video has several examples of more advanced MIDI editing techniques in Pro Tools. We'll look at different ways of selecting notes and transforming them using event operations, voicing chords and making notation a bit more accurate on piano parts, and we'll also look at using the pencil tool with different shapes to create MIDI effects. If you enjoy this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions below. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. In our first example, let's take a look at the drums. I'll play this. It's in pretty bad shape in a lot of ways. To select the hi-hats, which are these notes here, I could easily just lasso them like that. What most people don't tend to do is use the keyboard over here. So in other words, notice how I'm highlighting this F sharp here. And if I click on that, you can hear it, it'll play the note. And notice now my hi-hats are highlighted also. If I want to quantize the hi-hats, I'll just do option zero, and let's do a groove quantize. And now my hi-hats are great. And then to select the snare drum and the kick drum, you could just click and drag like that. Or what if you wanted to do different levels of quantizing for each instrument? So I've done these hi-hats. They sound great. And if I wanted to hear just the hi-hats, I could select all these and then do Command M and those notes get muted so that I can hear. So that sounds fine. It's a little mechanical, but we'll work on that a little bit more. And then Command Z to undo that. Now I want to work on the snare drum. So I'm just going to click here on this D. And I'll use the same groove, but I won't be so strict. So I'll do maybe 90%. And then let me mute the kick drum. Command M. And notice I selected it from over here. Great, and now let's work on our kick drum. So let me undo that. And for the kick drum, let's try a different groove. So let's go one of these logic swing 16th note grooves. And we'll do it, we'll keep it at 90%. Not really swinging that much. Let's try something. Let's try that. Yeah, that's better. See, I could tell that it was going to sound better because I could see that this was not on this grid here. So it's a little bit more swinging. Now, a couple of other things that you can do at this point. Let's talk about the feel. What if I want to delay the snare drum? A great song to listen to for what's called the delayed backbeat is a song by Wilson Pickett called 6345789. You can find it on YouTube. And Al Jackson was the drummer on that, part of the Stax rhythm section. That's one of the first examples of delayed backbeat. What does that mean? That means the entire kit is right in the groove and you're just laying back on the snare drum a little bit so that it's not quite in time with everything else. And the groove that that creates adds a nice propulsion to the music. If you listen to that song, you'll hear what I mean. Let me select the snare drum and option H. 
I can shift the timing of those notes. And I'm going to go later and I'm going to use ticks. And let's just try about 25 ticks. So you see that if I zoom in here, you could see that it's just a little bit behind the beat. Let's hear what that sounds like. I like that, but I don't like it on all of them. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click on every other snare drum and then do it. Let me try speeding that tempo up a little. If I wanted to bring down the velocity on the hi-hats, okay, there's several ways to do that. Let me open up this editing lane here, and it's set for velocity. And you can resize this lane by hovering over in this side here and just dragging down. And you can resize the edit area by hovering there. And also hovering there, changes to a cross, and you can move that up and down. If we click on here to highlight, notice, down here, our velocities are all highlighted. So you can just click and drag these up and down, right? And they all move up and down by the same amount. And that's great. A quick way to do that is you've highlighted those using the grabber tool. You hold down the command key. And if you hover over any of those highlighted notes, notice that the shape turns from a grabber, a sideways trimmer, and then you can drag down. And if you look up in this corner here, it'll tell you how much you're dragging those down. Right? So that's from now down 10 velocities, each one of those. Let's take a listen to that. So another thing you can do is option P brings up the event operations window. You can use option zero for quantize anything to just get this window open and then click on this menu here and let's go to change velocity. And we'll go over this again a little bit more detail in one of the later examples. But if I wanted to make all of them the same velocity, you could set them all. And if I open this up, you could see they're all. Let's say that you wanted to subtract some velocity. So this selection will take 10 velocity levels off of each particular note that's selected. If you scale by 75%, that'll do some compressing of the velocities. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say your velocity is 100. If you scale that by 75%, your velocity will be 75 which is 25 less. If your velocity is 50 and you scale by 75, you're going to be down to, I believe it's 37 and a half. That's down 12 or 13 velocity points. So the lower your velocity is, the less change you get. The higher your velocity is, the larger the change is when you're using percentage. That is contrasted by subtract, which we'll take the same amount off of each one. So let's, let's do this, 75%. And I like that best because that still gives me the dynamics of having the different velocities that I played in, but it compresses the dynamics. They're not as exaggerated. Let's move on to the next one.
Let's select our hi-hats. Let's just do some playing around with this. This might not be so incredibly musical, but it'll teach you some tricks you can do. So let's do Option P, and we will change velocity. So what if we want to change smoothly from 20 to 90? I've got that preset. Notice how they're all jagged. So now, you can see that we've done a crescendo with the That's interesting. That's a little mechanical to get rid of some of that mechanical feel. If you want to keep that crescendo is you can randomize and let's say 15 just to see what happens. So you see, it still keeps the general shape of crescendoing, but it's adding some random velocity. So it's not so mechanical. Let's move on to the next one. That sounds great, but if we wanted to see that in notation, it's not giving me the exact notation. It's giving me what I played, but I'm moving my hands to get to the next chord while I'm holding the sustain pedal down. It's not showing me the levels of the sustain pedal. So what happens if I just select these? Now look how I'm doing that. I'm not lassoing like this. If I'm up on the ruler here, I can just click and drag across like that. So let's do option P, which is change duration. Transform sustain pedal to duration. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. And then it will delete sustain events after transform. You may want to leave the sustain pedal down, but if you want to make a lead sheet for some pianist or some musician to play, that's a quick way to do it. Another way to do it is to go to quantize and quantize the note off. So we're gonna go back, those are all quarter notes. I want them to sound like quarter notes. So I'm quantizing the note on and off. And it does the same thing, but it takes away the human feel of the playing because I was a little ahead of the beat on the actual grid. So that's a cool way to work on duration. Let's take a listen. I played this in really quickly, but if I were to play this carefully while I was playing, all pianists voice their chords. And what do I mean by that? They put a little bit more weight on what they consider to be the melody note. So for me, on something like this, I want to bring out the soprano voice of all these chords. So there's several ways of doing that. I can hold down the shift key and just start lassoing like this. And then I'm hovering here, and if I hold down the, com the command key, it turns to a sideways trimmer, and I can bring all those other voices down. That might have been too far, so you just adjust it. You use your ears. So that's one way of doing it. 
Another way of doing it is to select all of these and then your, your option P and go to select split notes. And I've gone over this in a previous video. And if I want to select the top one note of each chord and hit apply and notice that they're all selected and then I can use my trimmer tool and bring those velocities up. And I'll take a listen to that. That's okay, but everything's too loud now, so I would select everything and just bring the velocity of everything down. And then this one just needs to come up a little. All right, good. Let's move on to the next example. I like that. There's a couple of things that we can work on. Let's go to expression. And let's say that in a mix with other instruments, this all was too loud. Right, so I can just select like this and then use my trimmer tool. And the way that you can navigate in the toolbar here, these different tools, is by holding down the command key and cycling through on this part of the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can go through all of those. Now with the pencil tool, you'll see it has a little triangle on the bottom right hand corner there. So if you keep hitting command six, it will go through all the shapes and then you can see the shapes here. So we're going to get back to our trimmer tool, which is command two. And then I can just click and drag down here. Again, I'm using the ruler area to select the part that I want to edit instead of lassoing like that right which is a little bit more difficult see i didn't get everything so just using the selector tool and dragging across that now let's go back to velocity now let's say i wanted to make the bass notes louder. Again, I went, I sort of hinted at this before, but this is the highest bass note, right? So that's this E. So I click and drag down, it will select all of my bass notes. And now on the very last one, it's selected both of the notes. So I would hold down shift and click on the top one. And then I can, you know, just drag down over here, or I can again, hold down the command key and use the trimmer tool. I can make them louder, right? And then I can select all and make everything softer so that the dynamics might be a little nicer now. So that's a really good trick in terms of using the keyboard here. Most people I see editing don't use that. And it can really, at times, be a good, valuable tool for saving you some time. <laughs> All right. Moving forward, we've got right here a synth pad. And I'm using hybrid for this. Now, I'm not going to edit the velocities, and I'm not going to work on quantizing. I'm just going to leave it the way it is because it sounds fine. We're going to work with the pencil tool and the different shapes and what you can do with them. For MIDI editing, freehand, line, triangle, square, and random work. So let's see what we can do with some of these. So we're going to go to expression, and 
we're going to do the triangle. Now, when using the pencil tool with some of these different shapes, it's essential that you concern yourself with your grid resolution. So let me show you what I mean. Right now it's set for 240 ticks or a 16th note. If I click anywhere and drag to the right, if I pull up, you see that it gets bigger? If I pull down, it's almost a straight line. And you'll see that the rhythmic resolution is a 16th note. So that's kind of cool for doing rhythmic pulsing. It's like a, almost like a gated effect or an LFO, triangle wave, on the volume. Uh, let me undo that. Now if I change this to, let's say, half note. Now, what's cool about these continuous controller values in Pro Tools is that you can highlight this lane right here, and then you can just duplicate that for the rest of your track, which is kind of cool. Or you can copy and paste if you want. And then you could take that information and paste it onto other tracks, and you won't erase the MIDI notes that are on there. It'll just merge in. Okay, that's great. So now. Let's look at let's look at MIDI pan and let's go to square and let's change this to quarter note. All right, this is good if you've got your earbuds on. Right, so a rhythmic panning effect, and it can be as extreme or as delicate as you want. Oops. All right, so I'm trying to stay right by that zero crossing. So now this is just more subtle. So that's kind of fun. Now what happens if we do, let's do this, right? Let's open up hybrid and let's right click on the cutoff filter and let's assign the CC. So part A cutoff is CC 36. I hope this is going to work. <laughs> so controllers, add, remove controllers, and 33 to 63, and then we're going to add 36. Great. Let's move this here, and let's make this a little bigger. Now we'll go here, and we'll see magically 36 has been added. And we could do little rhythmic effects with the filter, I hope. See, this is moving. Now, let's, uh, let me change that tempo to 120. So that's kind of cool, right? Let's undo that. And let's look at random. Random does just what it says. And let's change it to 16th notes so we'll get some really percolating stuff. And you see how crazy that gets? And you can make it very dramatic. It looks like a city skyline. Or you can make it a little subtler. So let's start off subtle. All right, let's do a little bit more dramatic.
Uh, let's get this tempo back up. All right, so let's do something interesting here. Let's go back and let's go back to square. Okay. And this should give us a nice pulsing effect. Now, what happens if we, I wonder if there's any mod on this. Let's, let's see. And let's try using the triangle for the mod. I don't know if there, what the mod wheel does. I haven't played around with it. So let's just experiment. Gives us vibrato. All right, I don't like that. So why don't we do this with expression? And we'll make the expression be a different rhythmic value. Let's make it be a triplet. So we'll make it an eighth note triplet. So we'll create, hopefully, something that's a little polyrhythmic. Da da digger, da da digger, da da digger. These are interesting effects, whether you can use them to create music with, that's your journey. Just showing you different techniques that you can use. Let's go to this last one here. What I'd like to do with this is create some accents, all right? And I want to create some accents in some of the offbeats. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to select just randomly some notes. All right, but we'll just do the first half. I'm going to copy those, right? Then I'm going to do Option T for Transpose. And notice, those are still selected. And I'm going to transpose those down an octave. And then Option M, as in Mary, to merge the original pitch back in. Right? So... Let's do this. Let's select these here. I'm going to copy those. And. Oh, I haven't put the key down. So scale steps. Let's do in key. Three scale steps. And then merge. All right. So this is a great way, the copying, the transposing, and then the merging of the original, tra the original notes is a great way to create, quickly create interest in a piece. So if we look at what we've done here, we've added this bass notes here. And then, right? Now, what if I wanted to, to say, let's, this and this, copy, T, and then, not in key, transpose by how many semitones? Zero. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven semitones, right? Whoops. Zero octaves. Seven semitones. Enter. Boom. And then merge. And now I've got fifths on those two. If I wanted to add some accents, I could highlight those two by just option, just by just dragging, lassoing those two. Hold down the option key, and let's uh, 
make it 16th notes, right? So just option dragging. And then option, select option drag. This is a great way to build dynamics. So let's say that I had kept the first part of this sparse like the original, and then the second time through started adding these additional accents and harmonies and additional rhythmic values in the low notes there. It's a great way to quickly copy, duplicate, and create variation in your piece. And then you can you know, copy those notes and paste them on to other instrument tracks to add color in your orchestration. Say those bass notes, you could add bassoons or low winds. And on the higher notes, the melody, you could copy those, paste those onto, let's say, a flute track, transpose those up an octave, and more orchestration happening. And then take the parts that are in fifths and maybe add that to the oboe part, right? So you see how using that copy, transpose, and then merging can really help you build really interesting textures in your piece. So these are just some quick tips. I hope this has been helpful. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, leave any comments below. Ring that bell if you want to be notified. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.